Welcome back. This show explores the possibility that we could all have lived before in a past life. So far, we've seen 80s TV icon Annika Rice take part in a regression session where she appeared to go back to the 1500s and the life of Richard, a boy who set sail on a massive voyage to the Americas. I'm climbing up a mast mm -hmm. and it's really scary and dangerous, but I love it. So could our adventurous Annika have been a high seas explorer, or was it all just wishful thinking? The experts have their own ideas. It amazes me that people with an IQ sufficient to know how to put one foot after the other uh, believe in nonsense of this kind. I think it's totally bogus. But then, of course, I don't believe in past lives, let alone regressing to them. If these really were genuine past lives, you'd expect that the historical detail would pretty much all check out and typically that's not what you find. It makes no neurological sense to think that the cells can somehow store up memories from a past life. This is just, this is just nonsense. In a moment, I'll be asking Annika for her verdict, but first, time to see if our journey into the archives has revealed any evidence. After wading through the sea of clues in Annika's regression, our historian detective reveals the results of his investigation. <laughs> Annika tells us about the life of Richard, a young man desperate for adventure back in the 1500s. This is the great age of exploration, and Annika's picked a date right in the middle of this exciting time. So can we find any trace of her intrepid seafarer? Well, a good place to begin is the town in which he started. So what does she tell us about that? Wooden houses overhanging, heavier at the top than the bottom. What Annika's describing is a building typical for the period with a jetty that would stick out with rooms or galleries above it, overhanging, just as she describes. And for that period, it's quite a new technique, so it suggests that we might be somewhere that's being developed. So what else does she tell us? I feel I might be in a big town with a port. So a town with a port in the 1520s. Well, for my money, that's Plymouth. First, Records show that it was being developed in the 1520s, with many of those overhanging timber buildings she mentioned. And not only that, it was the favoured port for the great explorers of the time. So if we accept that Plymouth was the place he started from, can we find his ship? Tall masts and intricate sails and wooden and a long prong out the front. And very narrow at the front and then very wide and then narrowing down at the back. Now that's not bad at all, because this is a replica of a 16th century ship. She's the Golden Hind, captained by one of our most famous admirals, Sir Francis Drake. As you can see, she's got a nice long prow. The hull widens out in the middle, and it's narrowed towards the stern. Does this ship hold the answer to Richard's story? I feel exhilarated. I'm climbing up a mast. And it's really scary and dangerous, but I love it. A young lad like Richard would have been given the basic tasks on board. Climbing the rigging to fix the sails was a common and yet terrifying job. Imagine being perched up there, trying to hold on and work while the rest of the ship crashed through the ocean. So the details Annika gives us about the voyage in the ship are looking pretty realistic. But the key to this investigation lies in the expedition itself. Is this boat carrying anything? It's carrying supplies, boxes and crates and instruments. Great! Another detail that fits with historical accounts. By instruments, I think Annika was talking about scientific equipment. Most of the ships which left to explore new lands took a scientist with them to record their discoveries and bring back exotic plants and animals. And this leads me on to another of Annika's clues. What kind of medicines or ointments have you brought and what kind of foods? From barks and leaves and strange plants that have healing powers. Mm -hmm. These guys weren't interested in finding new land. What they wanted were new markets and new stuff to sell. Perhaps one of the most famous explorers of the day, Walter Raleigh, brought us tobacco and, of course, the famous potato. But can we find any record of Richard's expedition? And if we can, where did he go? Do you know what those countries were called, where you brought the fruit from, or the... The, the Americas. 
America was certainly a popular destination for explorers, but Annika's date of 1520 is 60 years earlier than the first English settlement in Virginia. So could there have been an earlier expedition? And then it struck me. Annika says Americas. Was she talking about South America? Well, maybe the date she gave us holds the key. Do you know what the year is? 1528. Remember, 1528. Listen to this. William Hawkins became discontented with ordinary voyages to Europe and in 1528 made the first of his three voyages to Guinea and Brazil in the Paul of Plymouth of 250 tonnes. Now, how could Annika have known about him? There's a big intake of breath there at the oh end. My God, that's so bizarre, isn't it? I'm just absolutely gripped that that 1528 date actually meant something. Um, well, you you, um, you picked uh, right in the middle of that golden age of exploration and, and uh, seafaring yeah. discovery. You describe yourself as pioneering, as adventurous, as independent. And everything that Richard was at that time would seem to be everything that you are now. I know, it is extraordinary and also there is such a, a sense of um, a belonging by the sea for me. Last weekend I just said to the kids, I know it's raining but should we just go to the sea for the day? And they're just so used to me, they go, yeah, okay. <laughs> Get in the car. Here she goes again. Here, we go. Here she goes again. <laughs> but they're great because they all sail too. And, you know, that... that so it's not just bit. standing on the beach, you want to be, want to be on, on a boat. boat. I am truly happy when I'm on a boat. Truly, truly happy. So what do you know historically about that, that period? What well, you very read? little. It's not a period I remember studying. Uh, sort of vaguely, Henry VIII must have been, you know, around that time. Um, certainly the, the voyages of discovery I, is not a period I've, I've sort of studied. Um, so that, that, that was just a, a random date as far as I was concerned when I came out of the regression. And the Americas thing, it's a sort of weird thing to say Americas, isn't it? Not mm. America. Yes. Well, especially when we, it would seem that it was South America, because if you were yeah. thinking of great exploration, you might immediately think that you'd be going to, 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 to North America. To North America, yeah. So that, that was interesting. Sorry, I'm still in sort of a bit of shock to see all that uh, recreation. You know, there I am. Did it seem accurate to you? Yeah, it did. Did it seem it spooky? Did. And it seemed spooky because when that lad was up that rope, it, I really felt, gosh, that, that was me. Um, and, you know, I have spent my whole adult life up ropes and falling off boats. And, you know, there's a bit of me that suddenly sort of fell into place a bit because I've always wondered where this extraordinary gene I've got comes from. So there is, a, there is a feeling of almost something coming home. Mm. I know, it's almost making me feel quite emotional sitting here because this, um, this adventure in me, this, this, sen this pioneering, wanting to try new things and um, go to new places, which I have to say is sort of seeping out of me as I get older and my children get older and responsibilities change, but certainly I had it at Richard's age, or my age. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we talking about here? Certainly at 16 was just at the age where I was just thinking ex adventure, new experiences, all that sort of thing. Well, at 16, that was the age that he ran down to the sea, sea. and yeah. watched the ships departing. And, and 16 was the age when I just sort of left home and went and knocked on the BBC door and said, can I come and work for you? And then shortly after that, I just bought a one-way ticket to Hong Kong. And, you know, real adventures, real adventures, which for a girl is sort of slightly unusual. He's a, he's a, a bloke, obviously. So how, how did you feel about uh, coming back as a girl? Well, I've always felt I'm a slight bloke really I mean in my in my working life I was just always one of the lads the, the programs I've done like you know treasure hunt or heli um, helicopters you know I was always just one of a group of blokes in the crew and we'd all get on our kit and we'd all fly off with windows no doors on the helicopter and get wet and it was all quite roughy toughy and no one ever sort of said anything to me like do you want a hairbrush or <laughs> should we order some makeup for this or it was a very kind of exciting boy's own adventure I found myself on so it's funny there is a sort of male side to me mixed with my sort of femininity mm. and do, do you think your uh, your family will look at this now and say ah that answers so many questions there we go my dad is my great sort of 
litmus paper for all these things, you know. Because I've often said to him, Where, where's this sea stuff coming from? You know, what is it about me be having, to, having to be on the sea or by the sea and being truly happy there? And he's just always looked at me totally blankly. Well, I can't wait for him to see this. What do you think he's going to say? I think, I think he's, he's going to sort of buy into this in a way, because I think um, it, it could, it just explains so many aspects of my life and career and ev everything I've done. Do you, um, do you think after this experience that you'll view yourself differently? Have you learnt anything about yourself that you maybe didn't know before? Um, I think there'll just be a nice, it'll be sort of a nice secret for myself that, uh, you know, the next time I suddenly have to go to sea you know, for a walk on the beach and it's pouring with rain, um, I will just sort of understand it a bit more. Will you think of Richard up there in the rigging? Yeah, I feel quite, quite feel quite fond of Richard. You know, I, I, I'm really taken by that whole experience. Philip, okay. So thank you very much. Well, no, not at all. Thank you. And um, we'll. Uh, you've heard what what Annika thinks now. Uh, obviously, it's up to you to make your own mind up on on what you believe. But here's what the experts have to say on it all. Annika has always felt one of the lads on the boat. She's Richard, a cheeky chappy, a 16-year-old who's everybody's friend because he, he's such fun to be around. Very much, I think, as she secretly sees herself as somebody who's very youthful, very impudent. There are some incredibly interesting cases where people have thrown up a wealth of historically accurate detail that they claim they couldn't possibly have known about. But when people have looked at these cases more thoroughly, it turns out that these seem to be cases of what we call cryptamnesia, literally hidden memories, where people have picked up this information, maybe from historical novels or from films or from books or from documentaries, and then they've forgotten where it's come from. Annika went to the past life as Richard, not because it was a past life that's been affecting her negatively, this was a past life that really answers why she has such a sense of adventure in this lifetime and why she loves the sea and the outdoors so much. We can see how she's evolved into that adventurous girl in this lifetime. So as we've seen throughout the show, there are many different opinions on this subject. So, uh, so I'm going to ask Annika now for that million dollar question. Um, do you believe, do you think, have you been here before? Yeah, I do actually. It's this film and seeing that what the detectors have made of it has just explained so many bits of me that I've never understood. And I do feel I've been here before now. Good. Annika, thanks very much. Thank you. It's nice to see you. Join us again next time for another chance to explore the possibility that we might have been here before.